Week three's in the books. Let's talk about the Big Ten. College football is back, and we're back on the Big Mountain. Great to have you back on the mountain. I'm JY, and this is Steve, and we are going to go over some of the highlight games in the Big Ten for Week 3. Steve, which ones do you want to talk about? Yeah, it, great week in the Big Ten. A lot of fun, a lot of good games. Uh, so I'm going to go through mostly what the games that I locked this week. Um, I went 2-1 and one on my locks. I had locked three games. I would locked out Alabama and Wisconsin game, the Oregon game, um, the, let's see here, the Indiana and UCLA game. Right. And I'm going to talk about one more game, and that's okay. the Washington, the, the Apple Cup, Washington, Washington yep. State. So, uh, rolling right along, big noon kickoff, uh, Alabama rolling into Wisconsin. We talked about this on the preview. I mean, Wisconsin, they're just, they're still finding their way. Uh, we haven't been excited about their offense this year, and even their defense hasn't been great. There hasn't, they really have not had anything to hang their hat on this year. Yeah. So, you know, we locked Alabama to cover the 16 and a half. They easily did that, 42 to 10. Now, what I will say is the Wisconsin defense, I think, uh, really kind of showed up more than I expected in the first half. Uh, and and they and actually they kind of got their power run game going a little bit in the first half as mm-hmm. well. So they performed a little bit better in the first half than I expected. But eventually, uh, Jalen Milrow um, and that Alabama offense they just got rolling. Uh, now Tyler Van Dyke, the um, uh, the quarterback there, that was transfer from Miami that we said he had to do better this year mm-hmm. in order for Wisconsin to improve. He had to be better this year than he was at Miami, and so far through the first couple games he wasn't. Uh, and he got injured early in the first, I think it was the first, still in the first quarter. Yeah. Uh, was running up the sideline, tweaked it. It looked like maybe just a little tweak on the knee, and he got tackled. But it, it, he was in a ton of pain. They carted him off. It sounds like he may be done for the year kind oh. of thing, uh, like a more serious knee injury. So the guy they brought in was just fine, was okay, was serviceable. But there was really no threat from the Wisconsin offense after that for the most part. And Alabama just kept rolling. Uh, I don't know that they're at that high level national championship level they were before uh, but Jalen Milrow just as a, as a runner and, and you know you have to you really have to account for him so much and, and the Wisconsin defense was basically like having three guys kind of cover him or spy against wow. him um, so they were so you know worried about containing him and they still couldn't contain him and so they never knew if he was gonna throw you know run it or pop up and throw a pass and, and right. he just had their number so Alabama easily rolled 42 to 10. It was not a great showcase game for the Big Ten, which yeah. I didn't think it would be. Right. Um, so moving on, the next game I want to talk about was not one of my locks, but it was the Apple Cup. Huge okay. game. Uh, huge game for the Big Ten. Huge game for the Pack. With all the things that have happened, this was the, uh, you know, the, just a very important game for both teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did take, I had Washington State plus the four and a half points uh, coming in. Honestly, this might have been the best game of the weekend. It was on Peacock, yeah. which I know a lot of people were complaining about that. I had to you know, set that up, get into Peacock, and <laughs> it makes it harder to switch back and forth to other games. Right. But the production quality was what was good on, on Peacock. The game was great. It was in Seattle, like we talked about. Yep. Just a fantastic game. Um, Washington, they're 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 still in that rebuild mode, like like we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, their defense looked very solid, but Washington State it was just a slightly better team. They were pretty evenly matched, but yep. Washington State slightly better team. Uh, and then their quarterback, that uh, is it, Matier, Matier think, yeah, yeah, just a playmaker. Yeah. Uh, the the Washington defense was kind of holding him a, a little, you know, for a little while, but he broke free for a running touchdown, and then he was just, anytime they needed a play, he was making those plays, uh, and then and Washington State got the lead, they had the lead, and then the Huskies had the chance at the end of the game, they were down 24-19, drove all the way down the field, get down inside the five-yard line, had a, had four chances to score, fourth and goal, they had a chance to score, and that Washington State defense came up with a huge stop, yeah. turnover on downs to seal the game, win the game, very emotional game. Uh, for the Washington State coach and players and staff. Uh, and so they got that Apple Cup win. I, you know, I, I'm sure the, the Washington Huskies, I'm sure they're disappointed. But the, the, I saw some good signs for them. I liked their defense. Okay. Uh, I, I, it was it was very solid at times. Um, you know, that Mateer, he really had to, like, scramble and make plays mm-hmm. to get anything going. They, you know, they shut down the regular run game pretty well. So I think there's positives for the Huskies moving forward. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure, you know, it kind of sucks not to get that Apple Cup win. 
for sure. Yeah, I mean, and this was the game, one of the games we were really looking forward to yeah. uh, this season. And we both said on our pick episode, don't be surprised if uh, Washington State wins this straight yes. up. And, you know, you actually picked them straight yes. up. We're doing straight calls here as well. And and you picked Washington State. So, um, yeah. you know, good call on you. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Then the game played out pretty much the way I thought. Right. It, it, where it could be a, a, just a close game. I thought Washington State had a little bit of the edge. And getting the right. four and a half points just made so much sense with them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the next game, the Civil War, Oregon traveling to Corvallis to play at Oregon State mm -hmm. with, at the Beavs. Uh, again, it started out very solid game. Looked like evenly matched to begin with. Um, Oregon State, they they had a nice long drive at the beginning. Took a lot of time off the clock, right. but then they had a blocked field goal. Then Oregon scores, and then Oregon State, another nice long drive, ends in a touchdown. And you think, okay, you can see both teams... Oregon wanted this to be, the Ducks wanted to be a track meet. Yeah. Um, Dylan Gabriel, super efficient, hitting anybody anywhere on the field he wanted to. And they wanted to go, go, go. They wanted to score. And you could see you could see that the Beavs were looking to take the air out of the football, take time off the clock, yeah. power running game. And it looked like it could be working for a little while. But then, you know, as we get deeper into the first half, um, Dylan Gabriel broke off a long 50-yard touchdown pass. Um, and then the, the Beavs got the ball back. They couldn't do anything. Ducks get the ball back again, and they, they kind of had – it looked like maybe they had them stopped, but then there was this – there was a big pass interference call. And then the next thing you know, boom, Dylan Gabriel's hitting someone on a 20-yard touchdown pass, mm -hmm. and, and they're starting to break that game open. And then when we got into the second half, it was just that, – that just continued. You know, one team trying to slow the game down, play a power running game, and the other team trying to run, make it a track meet – Throwing, using all the field, throwing the ball everywhere, uh, and in the Ducks, you could just see they. We, we both of us said at some point the Ducks that offense was finally going to come together. Yeah. Well, this was the week that it did. Yeah. Unfortunately for the Beavs, uh, and and you kind of you have to kind of wonder, uh, you know, some of the players if they were held out in those first couple games because they had this game on their mind the whole time. You know, just get through those games, the Idaho game, and even Boise, which was a huge game for Boise, but for the Ducks. It maybe wasn't as big of a game as their, you know, obviously their Civil War, uh, because the Ducks just looked like a whole different team today, or this weekend, than they had, you know, the first couple weeks of the season. And uh, so, if you're if you're a Ducks fan or you're a Ducks better, or you were looking at them to contend in the Big Ten this year, you loved what you saw this week, um, and they just showed out. They showed. I mean, they were the more talented team, all, pretty much all over the field. Yeah, and actually showed it this week, unlike you know that first game against Idaho. And I assumed it was only a matter of time. I actually said that before the game started on X. Uh, I commented on somebody else's tweet or whatever. And I said, it, you, we don't know when it's going to happen, but it is going to happen. This offense is going to click. It's mm -hmm. gonna They're going to turn it on at some point. Um, and, it, yeah, it looks like it was this week. Now, are they, are they able to do that every week moving forward? We'll have to wait and see. But you knew a big game was coming. For it. it was only a matter of time. They have too much talent. They're too well coached. It was ha it was gonna happen at some point. Unfortunately for the Beavs, it happened against them at home. I know I saw people just uh, ecstatic. Uh, how many students uh, came to the game? Yeah. It was it was great filled, crowd, just great atmosphere, great atmosphere. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, it didn't quite go the Beavs' way at all. And, uh, maybe in the beginning it was you know yes. like you say it was back and forth, but man, really got away from them there in the second. Yeah, half. and the crowd, especially in the first half and the beginning of the second half, crowd was loud. They were into it. Great environment, yeah. everything that you want. They just they they did not have the horses to yeah. run with the ducks. So yeah. now what I will say, so we talked about positives for the ducks. I still think you know when when you when you talk about the ducks playing at Michigan, uh, playing hosting Ohio State, yeah. maybe playing in a Big Ten championship game, playing and then getting into the playoff, playing against those elite teams. Dylan Dylan Gabriel has been very very good on the short passes. Yeah, uh, his average has to be. Um, I'm guessing probably his pass is not more than seven yards in the air um, because he just does not – he's not really throwing it down the field very very often. Now, he's using the entire field as far as width, and, and he's hitting receivers all over, mm -hmm. but he is really still not pressing it down the field. And you wonder, can they beat a Michigan? Can they beat an Ohio State, a right. USC, a Penn State right. uh, if they can't challenge down the field a little bit more? So that's something we'll have to look for. Yeah. 
Yeah, good point. Before you get to your last game, mm-hmm. I, I do just want to uh, throw out kind of where you're at with your pick. Mm-hmm. So straight up, you know, winning, losing, uh, picking the winner here. You're 43 and five in the Big Ten, so you're you're all over it so far. 90 percent there. You 31 and 14 throughout uh, these last three weeks. Uh, in terms of your spread picks, eight and six here this past week. And then your locks are six and two. So you're hitting them at 75%. Yeah. So Steve's all over the Big Ten right now. Uh, he came out hot and he just keeps right on going. So 75% on locks, 69% on your spread picks. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. And we do our picks every Wednesday evening. So we're going to be doing that again this Wednesday, 8 30 Eastern, 5 30 Pacific. Boom. So I got to put that in there. We're going to do it live. We're going to do it live. That's right. All right. All right. You got one more game. I think. Yeah. So, well, and what you just said is a good segue because three of the teams that I was real big on this year, mm. Nebraska, Rutgers, and Indiana Indeed. Hoosiers. Right. And then that's what the next game is. Last one I'm going to talk about. It was the, the NBC Saturday Night Football premiere game. Yep. Prime time. Indiana traveling to Pasadena to play UCLA in the Rose Bowl. Man, they pulled out all the bells and whistles. It was beautiful. It looked great on TV. Um, but everything was great except for the level of competition put up by UCLA. <laughs> uh, you and I, I think we, well, I locked this game, Indiana yeah. minus three and a half. And I think both you and I were, thought the, the line was crazy. Yes. Uh, I would have put the line at like a nine and a half right. to, 11, to 11 and a half, something like that. Because I thought Indiana would win by double digits or, or be like right there around 10. Uh, but it was three and a half. We locked it. The final score was 42 to 13. Mm. Uh, and that really doesn't tell the story. I mean, UCLA, they they really had nothing on offense. They did not threaten Indiana at any point. And honestly, there was some, there was just some crazy uh, uh, the Big Ten officiating crew. I mean, you know, I've yep. been complaining about them for years and yep. years and years. And it's not just when my favorite team, Penn right. State, plays. It's just any game they have some crazy between the and now even the the, the replay booth, the official yeah. review between that and the refs on the field. I mean, there were crazy spots. There were I thought crazy targeting calls. Now mm. some of it is how the rule is set up with targeting. Sure. You know, um, but just honestly. There was a lot of crazy calls that kept UCLA in the game. Two of their, they only scored uh, 13 points, and two of their scoring drives, a touchdown and a field goal drive, were kept alive due to, I think, egregious penalties that should not have been yeah. called that way. Um, and so, really, they did nothing to threaten Indiana whatsoever. And Indiana can, continues to roll. Uh, Rourke, is his first name, is it Tanner or Connor? I always uh, forget that. Curtis. Curtis, okay, yeah. Curtis Rourke, I mean, dude looked like a Heisman candidate. Now, Somewhat similar to Dylan Gabriel, where he's not necessarily pressing the ball way down the field. He did take some shots, and he was very accurate, whether it was a four-yard pass or a 17-yard pass. Uh, at one point, he was six for six on third downs. It was every single one of his completed passes resulting in a first down, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. He, he was money on third down, ice water in his wow. veins on third down you know and that just kept that keeps those drives going right and so many of them resulted in points so they easily won 42 to 13 mm. uh kurt signetti i i said he's he's taken the big 10 by storm he may uh, he's my pick for the big 10 coach of the year already right. Right. um and he just he looks like that mad scientist out there uh he he has a plan for everything and the other team just has no answer for it uh, and whether it's, you know, offense, defense, special teams, but I love the way this offense is running. Rourke looks like a superstar, looks like a Heisman candidate. Really, I think I texted you during the game. He looks like a veteran NFL player that yes. was like, hey, I got one year more right. year of eligibility. Let me go back to college for a year. Yeah. Um, and I, the receivers, uh, fantastic, really just good, solid receivers that make plays on the ball. I, I like everything about this team. Now, again, do I think that they're going to compete for a Big Ten championship? Probably not this year. Right. But I love them to win eight or nine games, maybe compete for a third or fourth play, playoff spot from the Big Ten. They're going to continue to surprise people. Um, I just I love everything about the Indiana Hoosiers right now. I'm going to keep betting them. I think you're going to keep betting them. Oh, yeah. Uh, because they, they are they're, they're on a train. They're on rails right now, and nobody's knocking them off. I love it. And I think you mentioned to me that um, – uh, Kurt Signetti, as a head coach, no matter where he has been, he's never had a losing season. Is that correct? That is correct. As a head coach in 10 seasons. Right. And so they interviewed him, and he talked about – he said coaches take over, and they 
they tell their ADs or the presidents like, oh, we need a couple years to rebuild. He's like, no, you can win in year one. You can turn <laughs> over, and he's done it. Yeah. He, he was at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, won there. He went to Elon, won right away. Goes to uh, um, JMU, uh, JMU, yeah. James Madison University, turns that uh, whole program around. They win right away. They bump up to the FBS level, right. and, and they're just cruising. He comes into Indiana. Again, we, we've said this a few times. They were, at one point on the offseason, their over and under win total was two and a half games. They've already busted that <laughs> in three games. Unbelievable. We took them. We locked them. Uh, before, well, I, I know we took them. I can't remember if we locked them, but we took them to, to, to go over six and a half wins right. officially right before the season. Right. Uh, and honestly, I think they'll get to six. They'll bust that in the first eight games, probably. Sure. Yeah. Um, but they're they're just doing great. And, and like I said, Kurt Signetti taking the the Big Ten by storm. They have some big games coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, but they have an easier schedule in the Big Ten. And again, right. that was something we talked about with all three of these teams: Nebraska, Indiana, and Rutgers, mm-hmm. having a little bit of an easier schedule. And uh, you know, Indiana's taking advantage of it. Signetti yep. does not mess around. He called this just another business trip. They asked him about the next game, yeah. and he's just like, it's just the next game, and right. we're going to win that game too. We are going to do some things that the other team can't stop, and that, and we're that's just what we're going to do every single week until somebody can stop us. Mm-hmm. They showed him going on the crowd. like He's ready for Purdue. He's ready for Michigan. He's ready right. for Ohio State, right. whoever. Um, so I love what he's doing there. It was a fun game to watch, and I'm on that uh, that Indy. It's not even a bandwagon; it's a no, train. It's sure. a freight train. I'm right. on that Indiana freight train for the rest of the season. Yeah, you were on it from the very beginning. Uh, you can go back and listen to Steve talk about that in his Big Ten preview. So, there is Week Three in the Big Ten. Just some highlights of some games. We're going to do the Mountain West as well. If you're interested in that, I'll be hitting some games in the Mountain West. And remember. We pick every Big Ten and Mountain West game Wednesday evenings, as I said before, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Get on, If you're able to bet and you, and you do enjoy betting, yeah. um, I get some people just like to hear what we say about yeah. predictions, and that's great too. But if you want to, 75% on locks, 69% on spreads for Steve in the Big Ten. So check us out Wednesday evening. So with that, hey, make sure you give this a like and subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you guys next time on the Big Mountain. Thank you